Hey guys, and welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. I was fooling around in the basement with another mini arcade project, and I thought it might be an interesting video to share with a few of you out there. So maybe you'll find it helpful or interesting. And let's start with what we're talking about, kick buttons. They're referred to as kick buttons because, well, traditionally that's what they're used for in fighting games like Street Fighter. These three additional buttons on the control panel are not connected via the standard JAMA harness. In other words, you can't simply plug in a Street Fighter board and have these buttons work as the JAMA harness usually only supports three buttons for each player. And I know, just stop writing in the comments now. There are unused pins on the JAMA harness. I know, in some cases like the Neo, you can use a fourth button, others even five. I get it, we are saying in general, JAMA supported three buttons and that's what you can expect to have by default in most machines when you plug in a standard JAMA harness. Okay, so to solve this issue, companies like Capcom issued the wiring for these three buttons as a separate harness. Two connectors for each button and then all of that goes down to a JST connector and you just plug that right into the game's board. Problem solved. Each player now has six functioning buttons to use for the game being played. All right, so that's cool. I got this sweet Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 board here, complete with nice plexiglass plates from Lions 3. This game also needs use of three additional buttons for the low punch, low kick, and run. So I'll just take the kick harness here and yeah, it doesn't quite fit. And this presents the first world problem being addressed in today's video. Different arcade companies of the 90s use different pinouts for the additional control panel buttons. So if I want to play Ultimate 3 in my big blue, and that's fucking blasphemy, I shouldn't be doing that anyways, but I'd have to unwire all six buttons and then wire the midway harness in and plug it into the Mortal Kombat board. Then, if I want to go back to Street Fighter, do that all over again. And that's just ridiculous, and I'm not about to be doing that each time I want to switch games back and forth. Thankfully, there is a relatively easy solution to this, and one that I take zero credit for, and that is beautifully documented on James's Jamination Nation website. And in short, you standardize the kick buttons to a DB9 connector, and then you can easily plug and play and swap games. Now, it took me a second to process this myself, and it helped for me to sketch this out on a piece of paper. Rather than showing you actual high-tech fancy graphics that, well, I'm not even capable of, here are the actual sketches that I made. So Big Blue will always be Capcom games, no doubt, but I may use my Astro City for a variety of different games, so that's the machine I'm going to focus on for standardizing the kick buttons. I took the existing wiring that I had that was for CPS2 and CPS3 and snipped the connector off. Then I looked at the DB9 connector and decided which pin would run to which button. To make this easy for myself, I did player one buttons across the top and then player two buttons on the bottom. The remaining pins on the side I labeled for ground. These DB9s are really easy to solder even a novice like me was capable of dropping some flux in the channel and then soldering the wire to the various pins. And once I was done, I had all of the control panel buttons running to a female DB9. The only thing left to do was then to do the same on a male connector for the actual kick hardnesses. Now remember, these will face each other when you connect them, so whatever was on the left side of the female will now be on the right side of the male connector. The Mortal Kombat layout doesn't lend itself well to the Astro City's control panel, but I did the best I could here. Basically the medium kick button I established as the run button. Once complete here, I have male connectors on my Mortal Kombat harness and my old CPS2 connector. The CPS2 piece is short because it was what I cut off of the original wiring. I added a little hot glue around the soldering to help give some extra protection from me moving these things around and frequently bouncing off the concrete or the side of the cab. I know it's not pretty, but it'll work for now. So you can see all I need to do now when I want to switch games around is to plug in the JAMA harness and then plug the DB9 connector from the kick harness into the female one inside the cab. Super easy switching, no rewiring. Any future boards and games I get, I can repeat this process on and just standardize them to my DB9 layout. 
So not bad, right? I mean, this was a pretty nice tip shared on Jamination that I found really helpful. It only took me about 90 minutes or so to strip the wires and then solder. Most of the real work is in the planning phase and making sure that you have your layout correct on the DB9 connector. So I hope this was interesting and maybe even helpful for both of you out there who viewed the entire video. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.